Hello and welcome back to our Let's Develop session about refactoring in Eclipse. In the last episode we've discussed the first example from Martin Fowler's book on refactoring and in this episode I'm going to start the refactoring with writing a test suite that helps us to ensure that during our uh, actual refactoring we're not going to break the code uh, we already have. So let's get started with this. Um, for the process I'm going to un use JUnit4 and ECLM as a code coverage tool to ensure that my test suite actually covers all of the logic we uh, want to refactor. So let me first quickly add JUnit to a project which is quite easy because there's a predefined JUnit library in Eclipse. I'm going to use JUnit4 and add it to the project quickly as this. And the second thing I'm going to do here is uh, create a separate source folder for all the tests to go to keep them separate from the actual business logic. And what I already did before I started this episode is in installing ECLM. Um, you can see it up here. It's like an additional button for run configurations, which has this little green red bar here. And we're going to see how this works in a couple of seconds once I've started to write an actual test case. Okay, as you might remember, um, all the logic we have in our current project is clustered in this customer class. There's a movie class with only some getters and setters. There's the rental class, only some getters and setters. And there's the customer class with this big statement method that contains all the logic we currently have. So the test I'm going to write is a test for the customer class. Let me quickly add that. It's customer test. And this test is going to reside in com. Let's developer refactoring movie rental test. This creates the test class. I'm going to insert the first test case, public void. And I'm actually going to start with the simplest thing I can test, which is should. Uh, produce empty statement without rentals. So if I don't add rental to a customer, I expect the statement that is produced by the method to be empty. This should be the simplest thing to do. And to show you how ECLM works, I'm going. I'm actually going to execute this very test case. Okay, you see here our first test case passed. This is not that much of a surprise because um, the method is empty and checks nothing. So this next time I'm going to execute the test using ECLM, which I can do here, allow for the thing, uh, for the firewall uh, to execute the test, whatever test execution requires internet access. Not going to discuss this in this episode. And as you can see here, what opened up automatically by executing this test was this coverage view. And we can see here that um, the coverage report is actually pretty bad. My test class in the test uh, source folder was executed 100%, was covered 100%. This is not that much of a surprise, but there's 0% coverage in our actual business logic. We can split this up here by file and we see that there's no coverage at all. In fact, we can even see that uh, highlighted in the classes themselves. You already can see the green highlighting here. If I switch to the customer class, it's all pretty much red, saying there's no coverage at all. So with our first test, I actually want to start to change that. So we say create a new customer. Let's name him Bob. This is our unit under test. And the first thing I want to do is produce the statement from this customer, which is our actual value. And then I want to assert equals, assert equals should be a method. Why can't I import? Ah, no, I can import this, import assert equals, um, and say and some expected value is uh, equals the actual value we've produced here. Only thing I have to define is the expected thing and I'm actually going to have a look at the code that is going to be executed. So what do I expect? First thing it should be added to the statement is this header line here. Copy that real quick. 
and fill in the expected name which is Bob then next thing this loop should be skipped because there's no rentals added so what's going to be added further are these additional lines down here uh, let me quickly copy them both over say plus next line plus down here okay we can add the plus here to make it look the same and then the amount owed i think the amount is a double value if i'm not mistaken total amount is double so this is going to be 0, 0.0 and then the frequent renter points is an int i think frequent renter points int yes so this is going to be a zero here because nothing was added quickly format this code and re-execute the test case with code coverage as you can see now uh, this view already changed a lot because all of a sudden we have like 33.8 percent coverage here if i go to the customer class we can actually see that a lot of these lines changed the constructor is now executed the get name thing here the getter is executed because it's used by the statement thing and actually parts of the statement methods uh, have been executed we can see that this initializes have been executed this result thing here a string initialization has been executed the header of the for loop has been partially executed this is why this is uh, yellow if I go to the highlight here it says one of two branches missed which actually means that uh, he checked the loop condition like if there is an additional rental and it evaluated to false so there was no additional rental which means that this condition here uh, only ever evaluated to false in our test cases we're going to write test cases that ex actually execute this loop and this is going to lead to this line being uh, green because two, all two possibilities have been covered by tests. We can see that from the loop itself nothing has been executed and then these lines down here uh, have been executed so they are green. Okay, this is nice already. We succeeded in writing our first test and we can continue with writing our next test which is public void should what's the easiest thing to do the first thing we have up here we can see there's a switch statement that uh, walks uh, that checks the get movie get price code and the first case here is the regular movie case so first thing I'm gonna do is add a regular movie to the customer and or a regular movie rental to the customer rather rather and see that this is printed to the statement so should add regular movie rental to statement i'm going to copy this from here real quick and the reason i'm doing this is because the tests have a lot of duplication in them and this is actually a sign of uh, the bad design we have here because I need to check all the additional logic all these things around the extra things I want to test um, because the logic is cluttered in one method I have to check every time whether the statement starts with this line whether it ends with these lines even though I actually want to change uh, check whether adding something uh, to the rentals changes uh, the statement output okay let's add a new rental for a new movie movie with the title spider-man and the price code movie dot regular days rented is going to be one simplest case as I said and now I expect additional lines here in the statement output which is actually uh, the lines down here one line because I add one rental and the amount should be calculated from here uh, two and because the days is smaller than two because I just set it to one the amount should be two frequent winter points should be one so we have this line the rented movie is spider-man 
the amount of the movie is 2.0 because it's double again. We need to add a plus here. Then the total amount should be 2.0 and the frequent winter points should be 1. Re-execute this tests. The test succeeds and our code coverage jumped up to 73%. Let's quickly check our customer class. Again, something's changed. Now the loop is covered completely, two of two branches, like I told you before. The switch statement says that only uh, one of the four branches have been executed, namely the movie regular case here. And uh, it, within this branch, we see that the amount line here has been executed. The if statement has only been covered uh, half, like one of two branches, because it only evaluated to false. The body did not execute at all. The rest of the cases didn't execute, but the calculation down here partly executed. Frequent renter points was increased. The condition again it was checked only one of two, oh, only one of four actually, because I have two conditions here. And the code down here has been executed. The test runs green which is pretty nice. But it's not all of the tests which we're going to write, of course, because there are a lot of cases we still have to cover. But since this episode already lasted for a little more than 10 minutes now, I'm going to stop here and continue with the rest of the tests next time. This is it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like this episode, please give me a thumbs up. If not, drop me a comment or send me a message. Let me know what you think. I'm always happy to improve on your feedback. You might also want to have a look at my channel and the other things I'm doing. And give me feedback about what you think. Thanks a lot for watching again and hope to see you next time.